Hello and welcome everyone. This is the first tutorial on this channel. My name is Dennis Mabuka and in this video we're going to be looking at how to create uh, this glitching effect in Blender. And the kind of glitching we'll be doing as you can see uh, we'll be trying to distort the actual model rather than having the glitch occur over the rendered footage. Uh, the reason I like this effect so much is I think it can give you really really cool random unexpected looking uh, still images. Uh, you could also animate it and get it to react to music or because it's distorting the model itself you can imagine if you made a material that's influenced by the shape of your model could also give you some really cool looking results which is what I did with the title. So before we get into Blender let's take a look at what we're going to be making. Okay, really, really nice. So before we begin, just a brief overview of what we'll be going through. I will, I'll begin by showing you how I modeled this simple shape, which is where we'll be applying our effect. Uh, here we'll be mostly using just the modifiers. And then I'll show you how to set up the glitch, which is also the displace modifier at work. But mostly, I mean, rather than using the this the, an image for the texture, we'll be using a uh, some footage, some glitchy footage, which is what really drives that displacement. And then I'll show you how I set up a simple material that's influenced by the distortion of the model, like in the title. And then I'll show you how to set up that effect such that it's influenced by music and audio. So in Blender, I'll begin by adding a Bezier circle and rotating it on the x-axis so that it's facing forward. And then inside edit mode, I'm going to move it upwards so that the origin is touching the path of that circle. And throughout the whole process, I'll be careful to keep that origin right there. And then by hitting V, I'm going to convert the points to vector so that they have sharp corners. And in doing this, I'm just playing around with the shape until I get kind of get a shape that I want and then when I'm happy with the shape I'm going to add a plane and the idea here is to have this plane follow the path of that curve so I'll rotate it so that it's facing the direction of the curve and we're going to make it follow the path using uh, the screw modifier in fact we'll be using three modifiers here the screw modifier to kind of stretch it and extrude it as in a rotating fashion and then we we'll use a curve modifier to get that extruded shape to follow that path and then we're going to top it off with a subdivision modifier to smoothen that shape as for how the screw modifier works you can see we won't be using all the values we'll be using just a few of them you can see as you modify the screw value it basically stretches out your geometry in the axis that you've defined. Then when you change the axis, the direction that your geometry is stretched out in also changes. And you can stretch it either in the positive or in the negative axis. The angle basically 
increases or decreases the rotation of your object so you can play with this to get all different kinds of looks that you like the steps value basically just smoothens out your your, your geometry or, or your shape and the iteration is how many times you want that segment that has been stretched to be repeated out in the direction that you've defined now i'll leave those settings like that for now so now we want this extruded shape to follow the direction of that path so what we're going to do is add the curve modifier and select the curve that we want to follow which is the bezier circle now because this twisty tube like thingy is being is being generated from that one face if we now tweak this face it's going to affect the whole twisting effect the whole contour of the tube how it looks and uh, a big advantage of why I, I wanted to model this like using the modifiers is because now if you move it along the x-axis you can see this kind of wavy trippy looking effect that you get like it's a twisting along that path so now that we have a model all set up let's make the glitch effect and we'll do this by adding the displace modifier to the model and instead of using an image texture we're going to use some glitchy footage uh, so we'll add a uh, hit new and add a texture and give it a relevant name we'll name it glitch displacement and then under the texture tab is where we will really have the settings to kind of tweak the look of our effect so under the textures tab we're going to add uh, under image hit open and we'll use this glitchy footage i'll leave the link in the description so you can download it yourself when you import your footage into blender blender will only use uh, one frame from the video so you can either manually input the number of frames you want blender to use from the footage or you can hit match movie length and this will make it so that blender uses the whole length of the uh, glitchy footage that you're using also make sure to hit cyclic uh, say you had 250 frames in your animation and the footage that you're using only has 25 frames by hitting cyclic it makes it so that the footage that you're using is looped over the 25 frames of your footage will be looped over the whole 250 frames uh, 10 times in your animation so back in our modifier settings under the texture coordinates setting it to global and if you now press play on your timeline you'll see the effect doing its thing from here now it's a matter of just tweaking the settings in the displace modifier and under the mapping until you have something that you're happy with uh, for me i'll keep it uh, the direction in the displace modifier i'll keep it in the z-axis and uh, i encourage you also to play with your settings until you find something that you're happy with now to set up the material i'll begin by setting the strength of the displacement to zero so that i can have a view of the model undistorted and then i'll add a new material and give it a super descriptive name uh, like a thingy material now i want this to be a black and red metallic material with the red coiling around the following the contour of the of the shape so i'm going to use the pointiness attribute which uh, is a cycles only feature so this can only be achieved in cycles as at now uh, which is used to detect edges on your geometry so then i'll add a mix color node 
with one color input black and the other red and then I'll use the pointiness to mix between uh, the two colors to decide which part of the model gets the red and which part gets the black. So then I'll use a color ramp until I get a, a mask that I'm happy with. Then I'll use that to mix between the two colors before feeding it into the color of the uh, principled shader. Feel free to play around with the colors uh, until you get something that you, you like. Now to make it emit light as it distorts, we're going to combine the principled shader with an emission shader using a, a mix node, a mix shader node. And for the mask, this time we're going to use the back facing input from this geometry node. And what the back facing does is it differentiates the faces that are facing outwards and those that are facing inwards. And because this glitching is distorting and pulling uh, our vertices, there are points where uh, the faces that are inwards that are back facing are going to show through the model. And that those are the faces that we're going to use to emit the light. And it'll, it'll give you this cool effect as the model is distorted. So now that we have this nice glitching effect going on, and remember, we didn't even have to keyframe anything. It's just the glitchy footage that's driving the displacement on the model. And to get this to react to audio, we'll only have to animate the strength value of the displace modifier. Because if we set the strength to zero, we won't have any glitching. And you can set it up to any value that you're comfortable with. We'll begin by going to the animation workspace and make sure you have the graph editor. And down here you'll notice we have some keyframes and these are just the keyframes I use to animate the x-axis, the x-axis of the object to have it coil around the path. And then at frame 0, I'll add a keyframe to the strength of the displacement and you'll see it appear in the graph editor. Then I'll go to key and then bake sound to F curves. And what this does is it basically animates the, the strength value based on the audio that you've baked into that channel. Now on the bottom left, uh, you'll see we have some options to bake the sound. And we're only going to play with the frequencies. The rest, you can leave them as is. And this will set the frequency of the sound in your audio file, the range of the frequency of the sound in your music that you want to influence uh, the value that you're animating, in our case, the strength of the displacement. And uh, we're going to set it, because I want it to react to the really low frequencies, to the bass of the music, um, we're going to set it uh, a range of 0 to 100, which is uh, will work well for what what I want. Another thing to consider is that if you have access to the different stems of your music, uh, using them can give you the freedom to animate different things in your visuals to different elements in your audio without the different sounds influencing each other. For simplicity's sake, we'll just use this, set the frequency and hit bake. Now immediately you'll see that Blender added a curve, uh, but you'll also notice that we don't have any keyframes, so we don't have the ability to directly control uh, the values of our animation uh, in the curve editor. So say we wanted to increase the strength of the glitch and we don't have any key actual keyframes to tweak in the curve. So we're going to use uh, modifiers and this time not the modeling modifiers. We're going to use animation modifiers and we'll use two of them, the envelope and the limits. Now reducing the minimum value of the envelope modifier will stretch the lower values of the graph downwards and increasing the maximum will stretch the higher values upwards. So we'll, uh, I wanted a maximum value of 4 for the glitch 
So we'll stretch it upwards so that it the graph lies between these two ranges. And then we can use the limits to set a cap on the maximum and the minimum values on our graph. And then after setting the limits, we can continue playing with the envelope modifier until we have an animation that you're happy with. So after a bit of tweaking, this is the result that I got. So thanks for watching and I hope you learned something useful. You can find me here, here and here. Uh, please tag me if you make something from this tutorial. I'd really, really love to see them. So thank you and bye.